Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. National Financial Literacy Month is celebrated in April, which is a great opportunity for us to check and promote our financial situation and skills. Joining us for this segment, we have Caleb Silver, Editor-in-Chief at Investopedia. And for this segment, we are going to discuss investing for all ages. And Caleb, this is one of my favorite topics to cover, investing by life stage it's different for each one, isn't it? Absolutely, and it's a lifelong journey. If you're going to be an investor, prepare to do it for the rest of your life, and you can learn so much. But you have to think about where you are in life and your time horizon. So everyone always talks about, well, you want to invest for retirement. Not necessarily, but you might have goals, and you don't necessarily want to save and invest all your money now if you want to enjoy life. I love this cartoon that asks, why do I have to keep putting the money, the harder money I make, away for retirement, which is years and years away? Well, you can do both, but you have to know your time horizon, and you have to know what you're getting into when you start investing. Let's talk about the 20s and 30s. I mean, certainly time is on your side. Yeah, time is on your side, and time is your best friend when it comes to investing because you can take advantage of compound returns. You want to be aggressive when you're young. You want to buy stocks. You want to buy growth stocks, those that have long-term growth potential. But make sure they're good, blue-chip stocks that have good financials, but you're starting to build and you want those big growth gains to come over time and add to it over time by dollar cost averaging. What about for those of us in our 40s and 50s, career, high gear, kids, high gear, there's a lot going on at that stage. Yeah, your life becomes more complicated at that stage, <laughs> whether you have a family or you're about to build one or you're supporting other people. So you have a more complicated financial picture. You want to keep investing, you want to keep growing your portfolio, but you want to be a little bit more defensive Add some bonds to the mix, add some alternatives to the mix if you can, but think about this time as your wealth is growing, hopefully, and your portfolio is growing, but you want to make sure you're protected. So it's this combination of growth, but also playing a little bit of defense. And as we hit 60 and beyond, what are the uh, important factors you have to think of there with investing? Yeah, that's defense. You really want to make sure that what you've been able to grow over the last 20, 30, 40 years of investing is protected, which means you might need a little bit more bond exposure. You might need some dividend paying stocks just in case things go south. You might need some alternative assets, but you also have to think about drawing down your investments because this is the period of life, whether you're in retirement or going into it, that you're going to have to draw down monthly every single month and you want to make sure you have a portfolio that allows you to do that and the tax implications don't hurt you when you do so. All right, Caleb. Appreciate the insight as always. Thanks for joining us on Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.